surprisingly, Aquaman turned out good. You could say it went swimmingly. Aquaman, directed by James Wan. The film stars Jason Momoa, who ironically played Ronan Dex on Stargate Atlantis years ago. This time around, he takes his place as the king of Atlantis and the king of the box office with the number one movie in the world. Aquaman is the sixth film in the DCEU, and after the harsh criticisms of their films by reviewers, Warner Brothers and DC turn to director James Wan as if to say, Help me, James Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. And though critics have tried their best to submarine the DCEU, Aquaman is turning the tide, not only keeping it afloat, but blowing its competition out of the water, surpassing every solo MCU film in the coveted Chinese box office. Aquaman was created by Paul Norris and Mort Weisinger in 1941 and debuted in issue 73 of More Fun Comics. And for years, he's always been sort of the water baby of DC, and the butt of many jokes. But no one is laughing this time. I just hope Marvel doesn't try to ride the wave of Aquaman's success and greenlight a Namor film, because honestly, the guy just looks like Spock in a green speedo. And now that you have that lovely image burned into your mind, let's dive right in and discuss the plot of Aquaman. While fleeing an arranged marriage, Queen Atlanta washes up on shore near a lighthouse and is rescued by none other than Django Fett himself, Maori actor Tamora Morrison, who is specifically requested for the role of Aquaman's father by Jason Momoa. Actress Nicole Kidman, who had previously declined the role of Queen Hippolyta in 2017's Wonder Woman, was director James Wan's first choice for Atlanta. Being a fan of his work, she immediately accepted the role. Particularly when he said she could wear a mother of pearl and be a mermaid warrior. One of the things I enjoyed about this film was how Atlanta reacts to the surface world. Watching her respond to seeing a puppy for the first time, or throwing her trident at a TV when it startles her. Fun fact, the show playing on the TV is the 1964 underwater adventure series Stingray, which happens to feature a villain who rules an underwater kingdom that wages war on the surface world. So Django and Atlanta fall in love and have a bouncing baby Aqualad, and for a while they live their lives happy as a clam. That is until the king of Atlantis sends his sea monkey stormtroopers to bring back his runaway bride. So to protect her family, she leaves, but promises to return again one day. We skip ahead a few years as this whale of a tale kicks into high gear as Aquaman rescues a submarine from pirates. Now Black Manta's gang of wet farts might be tough when they're picking on innocent people, but against Aquaman, they're just a bunch of water weenies. Jason Momoa took to the role of Aquaman like a fish to water, but during this action scene, I couldn't help but think he would have also made a perfect Lobo. The submarine sequence is pure adrenaline. Close quarters, hard hitting, and perfectly illustrates how much stronger Aquaman is than a normal human being. It feels like you're watching a classic Stallone or Schwarzenegger action film. It's masculine, it's tough, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. After all the action is over, we meet Mira, played by Amber Heard. She wants Aquaman to come take his rightful place as ruler of Atlantis, because his younger brother Orm is a real floater that wants to destroy the surface world because we don't recycle enough. Now they could have been very heavy handed with this, but they managed to address the fact that pollution is bad without it feeling like an Al Gore documentary. They head for Atlantis and the visuals here are truly spectacular. I honestly haven't been impressed by visual effects in a film since I first saw Lord of the Rings in theaters. I saw the film in 3D and it was breathtaking. I enjoyed this film so much, I went back to see it a second time, which is a first for me. The world they create for this film is incredible. The scale and grandeur of the gate leading to Atlantis felt like something out of an anime, and I loved it. Now I don't want to give away too much here, because from this point on, the film becomes a quest for Arthur and Mira to find the fabled trident of King Atlan, the first king of Atlantis, 
before Orm can gather his army and begin his war on the surface. And much like Raiders of the Lost Ark, one of James Wan's inspirations during the filmmaking process, each action set piece moves the plot forward. Along their journey, our heroes stop off in a coastal village in Italy. And initially, Mira doesn't want to be where the people are, but eventually after spending some time with Arthur, she finds out it's not so bad being part of his world. We get some charming fish out of water moments as they search for clues with a bit of a Little Mermaid vibe, before Black Manta and Orm's Aquamarine show up to interrupt Aquaman just when he's ready to kiss the girl. Black Manta is out for revenge against Aquaman after their first meeting, and even though he looks kind of like a Power Ranger villain, I respect that they put the costume from the comics on screen, as they did with Aquaman and Orm. The action and heroics in this sequence are what we go to comic book films to see, with Arthur even saving a little girl and two nuns while fighting the villain. Mira's powers are also utilized in creative ways, making this one of the many fun and memorable scenes in the movie. This film is full of humor, adventure, romance, and dazzling spectacle. All leading to an epic finale that feels like Lord of the Rings meets Pacific Rim, as undersea armies battle monsters of the deep, culminating in a fierce duel between brothers to decide the fate of not only the undersea kingdoms, but the world itself. It is escapism in the purest fashion. It is everything that Star Wars used to be, and hopefully will be again. I highly recommend this film. Do yourself a favor and watch it in 3D. In the end, Aquaman is an exciting, action-packed visual spectacle. A hero's journey in the tradition of classic myth and legend. But it also broaches the subject of prejudice, as Mira and Arthur must learn you can't judge a people group by the behavior of a few. So for its sense of adventure, breathtaking visuals, Thrilling action sequences, memorable score by Rupert Gregson Williams, perfect casting, and still a performance by Jason Momoa. I give this film 5 out of 5 Death Stars. Aquaman is impressive. Most impressive. This has been Vader Reviews. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. And follow me on Twitter at Vader Reviews. Join the Empire today. You do not yet realize your importance. Share these videos, and together we will rule the internet. And always remember, you don't know the power of the dark side.